coming to the five minute gun around the box. Prada very late coming in from the pin end of the line or the left hand end. Team New Zealand around race control into the start sequence. Now, one of the things we can see already, innovation from the New Zealanders, they have no top mask backstays on, which is most unusual because they'll certainly need those when they come off the wind. So the New Zealanders are certainly up to something with their rig. We'll talk about that, though, after the race starts. Let's get the race underway, and then we'll have some expert opinion. So the Prada crew are translated, Luke is telling us, the Prada crew say there are three years of work here, boys. Let's do it. Here comes the dial-up. Nothing unusual so far. I kept thinking that we're going to see something from Team New Zealand. They've tried all kinds of things. We've heard about specialist sales. Certainly haven't got that, but they've got a good position here. Nicely to windward, safely to windward. Far enough off not to worry about being windward boat. Windward boat has to keep clear. They're well clear here. Good control, well deep in the box here. The New Zealanders out to the right, windward boat. The New Zealand are actually starting to move backwards here slightly. They're in a good position. Both boats absolutely stopped. Both boats just now moving backwards. New Zealand to the right, the breeze now 14 knots. And we can see there that New Zealanders do not have any top mast backstay. And we'll talk about that just after the start. Let's get the start underway, Italy to the left. Prada fallen off here, that's very close. Team New Zealand to windward boat. They must keep clear, they're gonna have to tack. Prada slow, so they've gone off it's in opposite directions. Team New Zealand on port, Prada on starboard. White flag, green flag, no incident. Team New Zealand to the right, Prada to the left. Here goes, stand by another dial up here. Same situation. Can Prada get across in front of them or not? Two minutes are getting very close to middle time. Here they come again. Prada must keep clear. Prada on port. Question is can Prada lay by sheeting on on starboard? Could they lay the pin? Or have Team New Zealand got them blocked outside the lay line? Looks as though the right-hand side is favoured. Some problems in getting audio off the boats. We're not able to hear the conversations. Our engineers are working on that. Wind has gone back left. You know, it, we're 180 here. Now the question is, are Prada able to lay? Can they make that boy? The New Zealand got good control here, 115. They're only about 25 or 30 from it, so time to kill here. I think Prada can lay the pin. to the final 30 seconds of the first race of America's Cup 2000. Only the second time the America's Cup has been defended outside the US in 149 years. So it's Prada on starboard heading out towards the pin end. Meanwhile, Team New Zealand coming back on starboard as well. In the middle of the line. Prada with very good speed, building up, coming out to the pin end. 
They're going to be right on the back. Prada, magnificent, right on the back with the Panin. Brilliant time on distance by the Italians. Super start by Prada. Meanwhile, Team New Zealand also on starboard in the middle. Right, here we are. Both boats alongside each other. Both boats on starboard. Both boats heading out to the left. This is the drag race. This is the trial of strength. Who's pointing higher? Who's footing faster? Those and other questions will be answered in the next five, ten minutes. Prada squeezing up underneath Team New Zealand there at the moment. Look at that. We can see that's Team New Zealand with the yellow trails. As we come up high, we can see that those trails have been coming a little closer together. Now it looks like a half boat length advantage at the moment to Prada. The question is how long can Team New Zealand live there? If Prada keeps squeezing up like this, Team New Zealand, in fact, there they go now. They've had to tack away to get clear air. Well, that was an interesting uh, start, certainly. Uh, I think Prada gained the advantage there to get that lured position and be able to first push uh, Team New Zealand off as they've now tacked and Prada joining them over on port tack now. This is going to be the most crucial part of this race, this first drag race on port where they really assess their speeds and the difference between the boats. And uh, it'll be interesting here to see whether uh, Team New Zealand can come back and still maintain starboard tack rights. Getting out towards the right-hand lay line. Look how close this is. Team New Zealand coming back. Rather, again, it will go straight fluid if they can't cross. No other options. Rada will not dip. They'll tack to Lewis. Like going to Team New Zealand, I'd say. They'll keep their bow down. They'll go very fast at them. Took Prada a little late last time in attacking. Now, Team New Zealand might live there. Team New Zealand might live there. To the top mark. Pendulum swung back to Team New Zealand here, big time. They're off them. I don't know how close they are to this ley line, that's important. Team New Zealand starting to crank up here. Look, Gain has got off them. So Team New Zealand now with the advantage. They are in the windward position. And it's not just a question, Chris, is it, of the bow in front of Prada, but they are out to the left, therefore in the windward position. I thought Prada were late in that tag, and we talked as Team New Zealand approached, I said going fast. What I mean by that is they put their bow down. They came away from the breeze, drove at Prada, made Prada tack slightly early, used that, that extra inertia to slingshot up to windward to be in the controlling position you see now. Well, it's a good start by Prada, but boy, isn't this encouraging for Team New Zealand. Already in this first race, we have seen one boat pass another boat, and that's significant. For Team New Zealand to actually come from behind on the first beat and get round Prada, that's good news for New Zealand. Interesting time right now with Team New Zealand getting the jump on Prada and what they've been managed to do is press their bow down a little harder, use that long waterline length and they're really jumping out now to a uh, great lead. This is fantastic sailing by uh, Team New Zealand at the moment. We see here Prada's about to tack to get out of this situation. Out on the bottom of the basin, the big screen has a capacity crowd in front of it, and they are giving it heaps. A dummy tack here. Peter Montgomery. Prada went on to port. Team New Zealand went with them. Prada first back. Team New Zealand matched it. Two dummy tacks. Put them away. I want you to put them away now. Trip, trip. That's the voice of Simon Dalton. Prada going again. Look, they're early. Back, back, back. Going back. Dummy tack by Prada. The New Zealanders have to board it again. They're actually losing by doing this. They should just go fast to the ley line, make Team New Zealand be the first one to attack and follow them round. 
Luca is telling us that they are discussing maybe a jibe set as well. That's what they have been discussing. The New Zealand is discussing a bearer weight set. Here goes Team New Zealand, NZL60, on the tack, on the port ley line to go through to the Mark 1 to complete leg 1 of 6. Now the Italians tack and they've got to suck that dirty air that will be distilled off the New Zealand sails all the way to Mark number 1. And it's the defenders, Team New Zealand, picking up where they left off on May 13, 1995, in front. Team New Zealand, Dean Phipps in the bar, with Joey Allen, Matt Mason on the mast. Go, Ben, go, Ben. Sheeta Battler, Sheeta Battler, Butt. Sheeta Battler, that is... Deep, Simon Dalton talking to Robbie Naismith. Well Robbie Naismith's nickname is Battler. And the New Zealanders have set. Prada are saying they're going to do a Zam Booker, which means they'll jive quickly once they're around. The Omega clock ticks off at 20 seconds. Team New Zealand lead Prada Challenge from Italy by 22 seconds after the first beat to Windward. Well, here you see uh, NZL60 just jiving over to uh, essentially cover Prada, and uh, they certainly look as though they're doing a nice job. I mean, to me, these are the first real pictures that we've seen of NZL60 in action, and a lot of the technical features that they've been working so hard on really are starting to culminate now in this 22-second uh, lead. Got, we've got the, I think it would be Murray Jones up in the rick. What he's looking for is the little fingers of breeze coming down towards NZL60. And this boat is quite innovative in its design. There's a lot of new features that I'm sure we'll work our way through as we go through the regatta. But since mark number one, that's telling me that NZL60 have made a nice gain over Prada. We're out to 149 metres, so that is in fact a gain over Prada in the first third of the, the downwind leg. Dean Phipps, Joey Allen, Matthew Mason, Barry Mackay, Robbie Naismith, Simon Daugney, it's Dean Phipps on the bow, Joey Allen just behind him. Mark two, race one, America's Cup 30. That's the voice of Simon Dorby. Remember, Team New Zealand led by 22 seconds at Mark one. A very different angle for the Italians. They're coming in a lot slower. And the Amiga clock ticks over at 22 and is still ticking. It is a game to Team New Zealand as the Italians round Mark 2 and Luna Rosa rounds out. 36 seconds. So it goes from 22 to 36 seconds. And the call coming off the Italian boat is we want to tack immediately. Hurry, 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 we need to tag, is the call coming off the Italian boat. Yeah, they paid the penalty of coming in too slow there to the bottom mark. And now they've tagged without being on full hull speed. So Team New Zealand in a great controlling position, as you can see there. Well, there's Team New Zealand there with a big lead at the moment over Prada with the blue trail. And if we look here, we can see how that happened. Prada were forced to do two extra tacks there. But Team New Zealand has really done a nice job of protecting this favoured right-hand side of the course. This is Mark 5, race 1, America's Cup 30. Team New Zealand still leading. Remember, they had an advantage of one minute and three seconds last time round this mark. Then at the last mark, that is mark number four, they were leading by 25 seconds. 
So here comes the set. Beautiful set by Team New Zealand. They're clearer than they're going to windward. It's a big gain uphill. What was it at the bottom? 25. It was 25 seconds. It's going to be way over a minute. They've more than doubled. They've gone, but I would say. Well, yes, I know there's been right hand shifts, Chris. Seems the oscillating be. breeze, but in the end, I think we can. An interesting translation coming off Prada is that they feel they have chosen the wrong mainsail today, which is a real admission. After all, that is the power, that is the motor. So maybe it's early yet in this first race, but based on what we've seen, Team New Zealand <coughs> seem to have a speed edge on this beat to windward, whether or not it's because of the wrong mainsail chosen by Luna Rosa. Here the Italians coming round mark number five. They trailed by 25 seconds at the last mark. The Amiga clock ticks off at one minute and 16 seconds. That is their biggest advantage to NZL60 in the race so far. Very, very hard to nitpick on any mistake in tactics. They've been spot on. Really, we've seen some tactical mistakes by Prada. And the issue issue is the unsung heroes forward of the afterguard aboard Team New Zealand. Their boat handling has been outstanding in every respect. Yes, I think significantly they jive the Jennicas very well indeed. There are only two comments I'd like to make. One is, I think, Team New Zealand at the start, could they have wanted the pin end? I'm not sure, you know, Prada got the pin beautifully and they came off the line and Team New Zealand had to tack away. Question, that perhaps the I, I'm not sure they wanted the right there. The second comment I've got to make is about Prada, is that I think they were maybe bound up a little nervous, but you know, dummy tax, that's not going to fool anyone. Jive setting in light air, is that a good thing? Missing the lured ley lines, you're coming in slow to the bottom mark, all a bit nervous maybe, and I'm, I'm not trying to be critical because I know they're trying so hard. Look at that. This is a spectacular sight as we come to the finish of race one. America's Cup 2000. They're sailing into an avenue or boulevard of boats. It is breathtaking. There's been no America's Cup with a spectator fleet like this. Yes, Auckland heralded as the city of sails and visitors from all around the world, including challengers from the syndicates who left Auckland before Christmas, have been amazed by the wonderful sailing venue, the Haraki Gulf, and the enthusiasm of the people, the knowledge of people following this event. Dennis Connor said, Auckland's the only place that you can get into a taxi, and a taxi driver tells you about what a bad jive you made on leg number two in race number three. And we can see the enthusiasm today Estimates yesterday of up to 5,000 spectator craft. Let's be conservative and say 3,000 out on the water today. There must be close to 100,000 people out on the water alone. And many others around the beaches and headlands of Auckland. Harbour Master James McPetrie has contacted us to compliment the spectator fleet for keeping the speed below five knots to try and reduce the spectator wash. Just over two minutes to go. I think what you can do, New Zealand, is breathe a sigh of relief that finally we've gone out here and we've finally seen two boats go head to head and Prada obviously haven't got a significant advantage. So it's going to be a boat race. See, New Zealand are obviously a match for them in the condition that I think you could have feared Prada in. But what you've seen out of Prada in the semi-final and particularly in the final is when the chips get down they have a way of fighting back certainly in the last two races in the Louis Vuitton Cup final they came back and showed real grit so there's more in that team there's quite a lot to fear looking ahead to Tuesday and Thursday the next races there is a forecast of a completely different conditions from the northeast at 15 knots. That's the face of Russell Coots, the only sailor in the history of yachting to won an Olympic gold medal and skip an America's Cup winner. Add to that, former world youth champion, three-time world match racing champion. 
brilliant sailor. Who has also become an outstanding leader. Once you get Russell Coots' confidence as the sailors aboard NZL60 have, he is very, very loyal. So that's a big advantage now to Prada, Francisco De Angelis and his team. They think they've chosen the wrong mainsail. They know there has been some boat handling errors as well. But let's not write these fellows off. Just because Team New Zealand's going to win this first race, Prada may be beaten in race one, but they won't be down and out. We know how good they are. We know how much bottle they have, how hard they fought to win the Louis Vuitton challenge and the right to win this. But a little more relaxed aboard Team New Zealand with Dean Phipps, Joey Allen on the bow, Matthew Mason back at mast, Barry Mackay as the pit, Craig Monk, Andrew Taylor, Robbie Naismith, Simon Daubney, Murray Jones, Warwick Fleury, Jeremy Scalabry, Tony Ray, Richard Dodson, Tom Snackenberg and Brad Butterworth make up the outstanding crew for skipper Russell Coots. And Team New Zealand ends at L60 come down to the line to win race one, America's Cup 2000. In the defense of the America's Cup out of Auckland, New Zealand. So Team New Zealand have been able to achieve something that the Kookaburra team could not do out of Fremantle. This is the first win by a team defending outside the United States in 149 years.